Back on Inside Tennessee, John North, my colleague, Dr. Fox is our guest this morning. He's an expert on the economy. And Dr. Fox, let's talk about three economic indicators that people should watch for to know how the state's doing and then how the country is doing. Sure. Well, first of all, look at, at unemployment or employment. It's actually two sides of the, of the coin, right? Uh, what's happening to job growth? And it has been really good. In, in Well, though slowing a little bit, it's still at levels that are above what we need. So that's the first thing that I'm going to be paying attention to. Second thing I'm going to be paying attention to is income levels. It, you know, none of us actually care about GDP. If GDP goes up, you're not, you don't know that at all, right? The question <laughs> is, what happens to my income and so what what how are Tennesseans doing per capita personal income in Tennessee still still more than 10 percent below the national average but we're rising among southeastern states and making progress now uh, Virginia's at the top of the, of the southeast Florida just above us we're now higher than North Carolina for example or Georgia wow. uh, and so what's happening to our income and then I'd look at this at the national level too it's the same kind of thing in the end it's what do I get out of the economy is is what I would be paying attention to. And, and thirdly, I would look at GDP, which is this broad indicator of what we're producing. Is it growing? And, and is it growing fast enough? With, you know, as our population is slowing down, we're, we're aging as a country, and this is a really big issue. What we're going to see is, uh, and in fact, it's already taking place, the share of people working versus the people over uh, 65, and, and among that crowd that's not still dramatic. working, is dramatic. It's just, it's fallen from over five to three and a half. And this, that is a long-term issue. How do you pay for Social Security? How do you pay for Medicare? And just go through the list, it becomes a huge challenge for us. And, and so population growth, and, and what can we do? Uh, and how can we keep more people in the labor force beyond 65? We're going to need them. Mm -hmm. I have seen reports lately in the state of Tennessee that the number of distressed and at-risk counties has been creeping up. And I wonder if that's anything a worrying sign at all from your perspective uh, because when things tend to trend they don't sort of stop they kind of keep on going yeah so so the rural uh, parts of Tennessee are very mixed in fact population growth in recent years on average has been as good in the rural places as, a, as in the urban place just in recent years mm -hmm. if, if you looked all through the 20 teens that was not the case mm -hmm. uh, but but that doesn't mean there aren't some places that have unique problems I don't want to pick out individual counties but there are, are some I mean, that are remote, and, and it's a hard problem to solve. Some of the early thinking was, well, just get the Internet out there, and it right. will solve. Right, broadband. Right. Yeah, but, but the reality is people want quality of life. Mm -hmm. And if you're remote, you still are likely to lose some of that quality of life. And, and so it's, it's a challenge, and has been, for the, I'm going to call it the truly remote rural parts of the state, places that are rural but close enough to Knoxville or in right. Nashville, Let's just that think I Morgan can still County. commute in. Claiborne yeah. or Campbell. I mean, you, you maybe don't want to name names, but, but those are two that yeah. have been. So, Dr. Fox, Scott. Let, Scott, let me yeah. ask, because we did touch on it earlier. Uh, certainly the first time in my adult lifetime we've seen housing really take a different turn. That was one of the great draws of East Tennessee and Knoxville was inexpensive yeah. housing. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, it seems that we've gotten on par with major metropolitan areas that people complained about the cost. Do you see any factors or anything that might be able to affect uh, housing becoming a little more reasonable, and particularly, you know, the middle class, the working class, the the, the family of under a hundred thousand dollars a year with two kids, and both parents have to work, and they're, they're struggling to afford uh, even an apartment, let alone a home. Right. Is there anything that can be done, or that we can see a sign of that might stabilize that market, other than wages going up? Well, a, another thing is interest rates, and they, they need to come down in the right way. I they mean, look like they're about to. They, yeah. they do. They've been coming down. Uh, mortgage rates, 30-year uh, uh, fixed is now under 6.5%. Now, you know, to me, when I first came out, I hate to say what <laughs> of school, what, what interest rates were. This this seems like bargain. Uh, but, but again, we have a population like who didn't see all this inflation ever in their life, also haven't seen interest rates this high. But, but we can't go back to a world of zero rates. That's, That's also right. really bad for the economy. 
economy. And and so we'll end out with, with I'm going to guess, mortgage rates in the 5 to 6% range. That will help people afford a house. We also need more construction um, taking place. And, and unfortunately, I don't think the signs are good on that in the near future. Well, there's also a shortage of labor, and we mm -hmm. could have a long political discussion about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is a genuine shortage of manual construction type labor uh, within the state and the country, frankly. Yeah, the con conference board just, just put out a, um, a report looking at this, and that's where they see one of the biggest shortages of labor right now across the entire economy. We're going to dive into the politics of the economy with the two of you right <laughs> after this. Dr. Fox, as always, we appreciate the perspective and your expertise. Thank you for having me. We're back with more of our conversation.